Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Crespo, and I am a product specialist with the company BioMaker. And first of all, I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar. Today, we're going to do a webinar to explain the results of a project of the Fields of Fields Forever initiative, that it's an European initiative that made possible the use of Bicrop technology by different public research centers. My colleagues, Ifigenia Urbina, me, will be panelists making an introduction about the background and technology of the company. And the results of the project will be presented by Raul Ortega, professor at the University of Almeria. So I am going to proceed with the presentation. So I'm going to share my white screen. Oh. Okay, the, the Cifrin soil biology to optimize agricultural practice by improving soil health and enhancing sustainability. Okay, in the current context of climate change crisis and exponential population growth, there, there are a number of global challenges to feed the planet that require improving soil health. In the agricultural sector, there are a number of current difficulties such as population growth, loose food quality, reduction of arable soils, environmental impact of agriculture, and a decrease in farmer outcomes. So in this context, and in response to these problems, the company BioMaker arise in 2015 in Silicon Valley, California, that aims to connect soil biology to agricultural decision to optimize agricultural practice and reverse the degradation of arable soils. So the company mission is to create a sustainable world through the recovery of soil and the vision is to achieve an ecological balance in the agriculture production system. Globally, we have worked in more than 40 countries. We have more than 2,000 customers. We have analyzed 122 types of crops and we currently have five laboratories, three of which are under the sense with the company Disagro, Biosphere, and Water Agriculture. So as a worldwide impact, we would like to highlight that we have managed to reduce by 20% the use of chemical fertilizer. Following our information in agriculture management, more than 15% carbon has been fixed. We have achieved that more than 8,000 farmers have improved their agriculture practice. We have a taxonomic database with 10 million of microorganisms. Um, we have established collaboration with more than two, uh, 200 companies. But what are the products that our company can offer as a solution? So among the products offered by, my, by BioMaker, we would like first highlight Bicrop test that allow us to know the level of health of the soil at a particular time. Bicrop trial that allow us to report on what is the impact on the crop that has the application of an input. And Bicrop rate that allow us to evaluate the level of sustainability of soil. So thanks to integration and agreement with company that allow us to expand the scope of our products so Bicrop descends. But how we can how can we help the agriculture community? So Bicrop test is aimed at farmers and advisors and provides a functional analysis in an easy to understandable report. Bicrop trial 
for retailers and manufacturers provides a quantification of the effect of an input with essential information. A bigger rate for farmers and advisors to enhance the food chain and promote regenerative practice. In our technology, we use microorganisms as bioindicators of soil health. We understand this complex concept, the health of the soil, as a characteristic influenced by biodiversity and functionality. In this sense, obtaining information on soil microbiology leads to a better informed decision making. We leverage the soil microbiome environmental data, machine learning to improve soil functionality and agricultural sustainability. We use, by our using our technology, more than 40 million reference in our database, using next generation DNA sequencing techniques and the first artificial intelligence based computing system that analyze the functional dimension of the existing soil microbial network contains ecological concepts and the advance of the understanding of the soil microbial. So all the information resulting from this analysis is displayed in a clear and understable way in the bigger portal using different, different tools. Information on the location of the plots, abundance of the microorganism, as well as functional by indicator are displayed. In this way, the BICO portal show data on the abundance of prevalence of the different microorganisms detected. Also show a comparative of each of the bioindicators of quality, health, and nutritional level of the microbiota. And also the portal show data related to the location of each of these plots where the samples have been taken. And now we're going to explain in which consist the micro trials that will be introduced by my colleagues, Ifigenia Urbina. Thank you very much, Juan Carlos. Happy to be here. My name is Ifigenia Urbina. I have my PhD in uh, plant soil interactions and I joined the company Biomakers almost two years ago um, to the product specialist team and I worked together with Juan Carlos to explain and make sense of all the results of the projects and I'm here to talk a little bit about the B-Crop trials that, that is the product that we use one of the products that we use with uh, Raul Ortega the professor that will uh, show the results of this interesting collaboration. So what is B-Crop Trials? B-Crop Trials is a product that was especially designed to test any effect of any treatment in the, on the soil microbiome, no matter if it's a natural treatment or chemical treatment, we designed this product to, uh, re, to see the response of the soil microbiome to the different agricultural inputs that uh, you may have in your soil and um, this uh, is a product that we design uh, with a uh, robust statistical focus in order to be able to compare different blocks controls and treated blocks and using uh, several uh, replicas of the soil samples to be able to give uh, a statistical analysis that support the uh, functional uh, results that, that we get. So how we do that? We have a, has a, in a normal uh, field uh, experiment, we have a control and treated zone and we sample this, the two zones before and after the uh, treatment was applied. So we take several replicas, minimum three replicas of each sound, and like this we are able to calculate the impact on the soil microbiome. What we get is, uh, uh, in terms of uh, a statistical analysis, 
we have uh, different um, results who come from the major chain that is a not significant result, but with a, an important change in the soil microbiome functionality to trend that give us a 70% of security that the soil is responding in that way by uh, uh, the product application or an effect that uh, is a uh, 90% of confidence um, results that your product is uh, producing uh, or is uh, doing that effect in your soil. So this is the, the way that uh, we uh, um, make the report, as you can see in the right side of the slide. So we summarize all the important functional results and we highlight also which is an effect, our trend or a major change in the different functional analysis that we have. So nutri nutritional pathways, stress adapters, uh, feed hormones uh, productions and, and so on. So this is the uh, the focus that we use with the analysis that uh, we uh, uh, did with, uh, sorry, because this is going without me. So this is the focus that we use with Raul Ortega. He will show uh, several results after me. And now I, I would like to talk about the um, uh, Fields Forever's project that is a ground European funding that uh, provide and allow to uh, different research institutes, farmers and agriculture manufacturers take profit from our functional analysis uh, and, and uh, have all the uh, the analysis from the DNA of the soil. So this is the collaboration that we did with uh, Raul. So uh, Raul applied for a project in the tomato. He will explain that more in detail in the next minutes. And uh, was selected has an interesting uh, project and we provide all the uh, analysis that they need to take, uh, um, to take, uh, profit of the uh, DNA sequencing and the functional predictions that biomakers normally do. Fields Forever is a grant project who aim to uh, recover soil health worldwide, providing the, the biological analysis to different uh, actors, uh, farmers, uh, researchers, and agricultural manufacturers. And uh, we are happy to say that uh, this is uh, a worldwide um, initiative and we are working mostly in almost all the world, um, as you can see in, in this um, map. So now I will pass the, the floor to, uh, to Raul, who will explain the uh, interesting projects in the tomato crop that uh, we carry out with him. So Raul, please, happy to have you here. The floor is yours. Thank you, <clears throat> Ifigenia and Juan for inviting me to, to show the results of our project based on the application of um, microorganisms on a tomato crop. Please let me introduce myself. My name is Raul Ortega Perez. I'm a researcher of the Department of Agronomy of the University of Almería in Spain, and I'm the head of the Soil Microbiological Lab of the CIA Vital uh, Center, Research Center. <clears throat> My PhD uh, was based on, on soil science. So the, the title of the results of the project uh, I'm going to show is biofertilizers as an important tool to reduce the input of traditional synthetic fertilizers and improve the quality and productivity of crops. As Ifigenia said before, this project was affiliated to the Fields Forever initiative promoted by biomakers. Okay. So <clears throat> from the point of view of the European policies, 
there is uh, a big demand on several um, goals. One of them is the reducing of uh, synthetic fertilizers up to a quantity of 20%. Please re remind this date because it's going to be important uh, in my presentation. There are another other policies <clears throat> that like Agenda 2030, where there are many other goals where this kind of research can uh, apport uh, information, data, and support these, these, these goals, as those as I, I am selecting here. First, I'd like to, to, to show, this is one part of the province of Almeria here, and we can see the evolution in just five, five decades, 50 years, of what we can see this white spot, what we, is now called the sea of plastic. Here we have an aerial view, okay, of this sea of plastic. This is a, a surface, surface covered by greenhouses, okay? So it's, it's curious because it's just close to the to the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, the surface uh, estimated in the full province of Almeria is around thirty five thousand hectares, more or less 40,000 uh, 40, football stadiums. Okay, this is a very in intensive area of agriculture because we have a climate which favors with the help of the greenhouses to produce uh, high uh, yields of, of crops, mainly vegetables, for example, like tomato, cucumber, pepper, etc., which then later are exported in winter to the rest of, of uh, Europe. So we are also called the garden of Europe, okay? But imagine that uh, the use of uh, Fertilizers in an intensive way can be a, a problem in terms of contamination of own water, uh, soils by, by salt, etc. So that's why this kind of studies are of great interest. In this case, what we did was to use three uh, species of uh, um, bacteria. One. Uh, a sort of bacteria vinylandi, which is one bacteria we can fix atmospheric nitrogen and provide it to the soil and later to the plants. And another two uh, strains of Bacillus aereus uh, were included in these two products, biophosphorus and biopotassium. And these bacteria have the ability to uh, <clears throat> solubilize the potassium and phosphor, which is already present in the soil, because there is a problem of over fertilization in soils. But uh, the issue is that most of these fertilizers, when are added to the soil, they precipitate in chemical forms that are not bioavailable for plants. So uh, farmers need to add more and more and more. Uh, potassium and, and phosphorus. However, with the help of some bacteria, they have the ability to solubilize these uh, nutrients and make them bioavailable for, for the plants again. So uh, our study was done in a commercial uh, greenhouse. This, this picture corresponds to the greenhouse where we uh, make this study. So these were uh, totally uh, operational uh, conditions. Uh, I mean, the tomatoes we we obtain here were later distributed to cons to consumers. Okay, so it's a, a total a real uh, experiment. Well, uh, in summary, the aims of our study were four. The first one was to study the implantation of this plant growth promoting bacteria in an intensive commercial greenhouse tomato crop. Uh, second one was to study their fertilizing effect as atmospheric nitrogen fixers and phosphor and potassium solubilizers in soils. Also uh, to study the biofertilizing effect in terms of production and quality of fruits. And finally, and the most important in also in terms of, of, of the farmers was to analyze the uh, 
economically benefits of the use of this uh, bacteria. Just let me show you uh, the factorial design. Okay. Here we have an aerial view of the greenhouse. We separate, well, we delimitate it for areas <coughs> based on in the irrigation system, and then we apply four treatments. The blue one is, let's say, the control treatment where no bacteria were applied. None of the, the bacteria I shown before. In treatment one, the white one here, here we applied the bacteria once only, okay, at the beginning of the crop. We just apply one just to see if there was a, a, a slight difference or of not with the control. The main uh, treatments were the yellow and the red, okay. In both treatments, uh, the three pod products, the free biofertilizers, bio the free uh, species of uh, bacteria were applied periodically, more or less every 40 days along the crop, over the crop. And the difference was here that in the red treatment, we also apply a reduce in a 20% of the synthetic fertilizers. I mean, here, in all the other treatments, a synthetic fertilizer was applied like uh, every time, like in the previous years. But this time, in the red treatment, there was a reduction in a 20% of synthetic fertilizers. Okay, so we wanted to know if the bacteria were able to uh, close the gap. Okay, the stress in the plants uh, produced by the reduction in the in the fertilizers. Okay, here we can see uh, some pictures inside of the different sector. So we can see that there were uh, the same uh, conditions for, for each treatment. Okay, bacteria were applied using the fertigation system. Okay, so they were applied together with the water to, to, to uh, the water to feed the, the, the plants. Okay. And what parameter we study? Uh, of course, the soil microbiology. Uh, as we send the samples, we collect it at different times of the crop to the laboratories of Ion Maker to perform the big crop trials. Okay. Where in our own laboratories, we studied the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium content in soils, leaves, and fruits to see the effect, the fer fertilizing effect, okay, of this bacteria. We measure some free quality parameters like pH, conductivity, hardness, uh, breeze degrees, etc. Uh, of course, the crop yield, we wanted to know the difference in terms of production, and not only in the total quantity, but also in the size of the tomatoes, I mean in the caliber. Okay, we classify the different fruits in terms of size. Okay, we can start showing you the, the results. Uh, let's start with the contents of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in soils. Okay, and we see especially we sampled this time to uh, two different times. Okay, the first date was more or less in the middle of the crop and the final, the last date was at the end more or less of, of the crop where, uh, when we were harvesting the latest times. And here, especially, we can see in the control, remember control, no bacteria apply, the, the blue treatment. We can see that the contents of phosphorus in soil were quite low compared with the other treatment where we apply bacteria. So we see here clearly the uh, uh, fertilizing effect of the bacteria, mainly in the case of the phosphorus. In the case of potassium, if we focus here, because this the, in the upper part and the, in the bottom is the same uh, chart, but here we have focus here. Uh, in the part in the in this date, 
we see that there was also an important difference between the control treatment in the case of potassium and the other treatments where we apply the bacteria. So here, where clearly uh, we saw here the, clearly the influence of, of the bacteria applies, mainly in the case of phosphorus and, and potassium, in the case of soils. In regarding to uh, contents in leaves, here we can also gain focus in phosphorus, available phosphorus. There was an important increase when we apply bacteria. But however, in the case of potassium and nitrogen, the difference was not so clear. Right? <clears throat> uh, in the case of contents in fruits, this time as we also measure the the production of uh, we the weight of the fruit so we could relate the percentage of the nutrients in the fruit and transform them to absolute values considering also the production of fruits per square meter and the this table is quite interesting okay because here um, we have the, let's say, the grains of nitrogen that move from the soil to the fruit by square meters, okay? But if we focus more in the percentage compared with the control here, we see that the red treatment, remember, red treatment refers to bacteria applied uh, periodically and uh, uh, decrease uh, of a 20% of synthetic fertilizers. So we see a bigger effectiveness okay, in the red treatment for nitrogen, a 16% more extractive from the soil, a 30, close 34% more extractive from, phosphor, from phosphorus, and 22% uh, more extractive of potassium compared with the control. In the case of the uh, yellow treatment results were also uh, quite good, um, mainly for phosphorus, and not so interesting in the case of the potassium and nitrogen. Okay, so here we see clearly the influence of the bacteria again in the case of fruit. However, uh, related with the free quality parameters, we measure the more, more or less uh, classic parameter we have here with table. We didn't find a uh, significant differences between them. Maybe uh, the grease degrees increase a little bit, and also the mature index, but there was no sin significant difference in terms of free quality par parameters. So it didn't increase or decrease no 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 difference were found here here if we focus in production uh, I, I can tell you that there was a uh, 19 uh, harvest times here and we were estimating the production in each one here is the, cum the cumulative okay and we see that more or less uh, at the middle of the harvest time, we see how clearly the treatments where bacteria were applied periodically, the yellow and the red treatments, uh, started producing more uh, fruits, but well, more quantity of fruits in terms of kilograms per square meter. Okay, that's that's quite interesting because here again we see the influence of the bacteria. Even the, you see how the control where no bacteria were applied was the less treatment, the treatment with less production. And just with applying them once, remember the T1, we see a slight difference that it was even higher in the treatments where bacteria uh, were applied periodically. In terms of total production, we see clearly that at the end of the harvest time, uh, we obtain a 20% more of production in the case of the uh, yellow treatment and a 33% more in the case of the uh, red treatment. Okay? So it's curious we were, because at the beginning we expected to uh, have better results 
in the yellow treatment because there was no reduction in synthetic fertilization and also bacteria were applied. But that was not the case. Curiously, it was where we apply bacteria and we reduce the synthetic fertilizers. Later, we will explain uh, our, our hypothesis about, about that. As I told you before, we didn't only focus in terms of total production, but also in the size of the uh, fruits. I mean, the, we uh, separate different ca calibers, okay? Triple G was based on the size of the equatorial diameters. So you have tomato of triple G, double G, G, or lower categories. So what we found is that the reed treatment produce a higher quantity of fruits triple G. So, I, I mean, uh, the fruits were bigger in the red treatment. In the case of the production of double G, okay, this kind of tomatoes, the, the, the second starting from the left, again, the red treatment was better, but also the yellow treatment, okay, both treatments with the periodically application of bacteria. And in the lower, in the G category, and the lower categories, there was not a big differences. So the key here was the production, the difference in production was also based in that uh, we obtained fruits uh, with a bigger size where when we applied the bacteria, right? Here is a summary of the previous, okay? at the end of, of, of the total production. And we said that at the red treatment, the triple G and double G categories account for close to a 15% or a 50% of production. But however, in the treatment control, it was close to a 30%. So while there was an important increase in fruits with a bigger size. And also if we, go inside uh, each category, we also found that when we compare the triple G categories, double G, G and lower categories, again, the red treatment, even inside each category, this, the, the weight of the fruits were, were bigger, okay? So red treatments produce more productions, mm, bigger sizes of tomatoes, and in fruits uh, with more weight, okay? So it was clearly the, the champion, no? The, the, the treatment champion. But of course, in terms of economical, let me go back a little bit. As you can imagine, this, the bigger uh, tomato, the biggest tomato, the triple G, are more well paid. I mean, the farmer can separate the, the tomatoes in function of the caliber, they can prepare boxes with triple G, double G, et cetera. And of course the boxes which are full uh, of triple G are more well paid. So that in terms of uh, in, in cans, of course, that will result in more differences. I mean, Remember that we obtained an increase in production in the red treatment of a 20%, but in terms of uh, increase of incomes for the farmer, it resulted, resulted in a 32%. So it was even a more increase. And of course, the, the red treatment, remember that in terms of production, there was a 32% of increase, but in terms of uh, increase of incomes, it rise up to a 52% more, okay? So imagine if you uh, have a crop and from one year to another, just with the application of these biofertilizers, you can increase your incomes a 50% more. So that, these are real results. I left for the end the, the microbiological data because here we have, uh, we think we have an explanation 
of what happened during during the, the treatments okay so uh, this table uh, obtained from the bee crop trials analysis analysis provided by biomaker we see uh, here an increase in taxa and microbiome taxa related with the inorganic phosphorus solubilization and potassium solubilization in both treatments where bacteria were applied. We see the, the, the green values result in an increase of taxa related with this function. Not, we didn't obtain green values in terms of nitrogen, because if you remember, I told you at the beginning that the bacteria we uh, we applied to increase the fertilization of nitrogen were uh, nit atmospheric nitrogen fixers. But here, these analysis were more focused in bacteria. We can mineralize, we can decompose the organic matter and release the nitrogen contained in, on it. So that's this. So I mean that these results are, are not important because the bacteria applied were different. But however, there was uh, a surprise. Okay, here, because if we see what happened uh, in other uh, products like the hormone production, okay, osin, tetokinin, and gibberellin, we see a really important increase in the red treatments of this kind of fit hormones. And uh, this, uh, in, in the literature, these fit hormones are related with the uh, elongation of plants and in the division and proliferation of and cell differentiation. So, I mean, there was uh, an increase in bacterial tasa related with the production of fit hormones. So this can explain why we obtain better results remember that they were mainly based on obtaining fruits of bigger size okay because there was an increase in also in the production of fit hormones however in the red in the yellow treatment where there was no a significant and uh, decrease of synthetic fertilizers the increase of fit hormones was not so clear as uh, we think it, that is also clear because uh, this has a, a, an explanation. And it's that if you provide enough, enough synthetic fertilizers to the plants of tomatoes, that like it happens in the, in the yellow treatment. So the plant uh, doesn't need to search for the help of the bacteria. But in the case of the mm, red treatment, Plants, uh, let's let's say they are stressed because there is a lack of nutrients, so they uh, interact with the bacteria to create a more symbiotic relationship. So they they maximize the relationship with the bacteria. Okay, so it's clear that the the key is to apply biofertilizers and also reduce the synthetic fertilization because the, the max, this will maximize okay, the effect of, of the bacteria. So let me make a summary to, to finish the presentation of my results. Okay? So in terms of the fertilizing effect in soils, it was clear for the bio phosphorus and potassium products. And in the case of leaves, uh, the, the bio phosphorus was also clear. Uh, in terms of uh, extraction of nitrogen, phosphorus, um, and potassium from soils to the fruits, we see that the red treatment and showage and a higher efficiency in extraction of 16% in nitrogen, 34% in phosphorus, and 23% than the control treatment. Okay, in terms of production, the red treatment produce 33% uh, more of fruits in terms of kilowatt, kilograms per square meter, which resulted in a 52% of more uh, of, of an increase in uh, of an economic increase. In case of the red treatments, the results were also good, 
but not so good because it just was a 20% more production and a 32 uh, more increase in in, econ in the economic incomes. Okay, so related with the microbiological microbiological analysis, we see uh, there was an increase in tasks that are related with the soil mobilization, mainly of phosphorus and potassium, but also in those that are involved in the production of feed hormones, especially in the treatment with reduced fertilization in red. So the final conclusions are that these microbiological products have shown a great fertilizing effect in soil, fruits, and also seem to have favored the development of feed hormones involved in wheat growth. growth. It also seems clear that the levels of fertigation used in greenhouses prevents the occurrence of the maximum potential of biofertilizers. This, this is excellent news, news which can help to move from an intensive agriculture, highly demanding of resources, to a more sustainable agriculture. Just to finish, uh, I want to tell you that this uh, a study uh, obtained attention from the media. Here there is a, a report in, a, in one newspaper, and also one of the students that was involved in this, stu in this uh, study uh, obtained a, a prize, the first prize on sustainable agriculture and healthy food of the University of Almeria Prima Florce. And that's I want to thank you for your, your attention. This is the, the end of my presentation and I'm available for further questions. Thank you very much, Raul. It was amazing to do this collaboration with you and have these uh, super interesting results matching the above brown part that increase in the tomato size and uh, weight with the uh, tax are related with the plant growth promoters in the soil, as you say. And also in that table, we can see an increase in the tax related with the phosphorus solubilization that match quite nicely the results in the, in the soil where you analyze the phosphorus available that was uh, higher in the bacteria treatment uh, plots. So, this was an amazing collaboration. We are very happy to uh, be involved in that uh, study with you. And we have uh, some minutes uh, to, to do a, a couple of uh, questions in the round table and maybe one or two questions from the public. So uh, let me start with uh, questions. I think uh, both of them are, uh, are for you, Raul. Are microorganisms based product expensive now? Well, um, as you remember, uh, at the beginning I showed you some bottles. This bottle, uh, the volume is one liter, and with this, with one bottle, uh, it can be used in one hectare of the of one greenhouse. So the thing is that you don't need to 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 use to use too much bio fertilizers. Okay, and the, in the case of the red treatment where we diminish the 20% uh, of synthetic fertilizers, the, si the savings uh, obtained from this uh, reduction in synthetic fertilizer was more or less the same cost of the uh, biofertilizer products uh, okay, uh, applied during the crops. So the more or less uh, is the same cost okay, in, in terms of ferti in fertilization, fertigation, but the difference are on one side, well, on the point of view of the environment, of course, and in terms of incomes for, for the farmer, there was a 50% of increase, of increase. Okay, This year, the farmer is applying the bacteria not only in the red sector, but all in the full greenhouse, of course. Okay. So related okay. with that, there is a person in the audience, Michael, that uh, uh, related with the topic that you are talking now, he asked uh, if you also take the extra efforts in account for doing the treatment every 40 days. I suppose he he want to know if if it's if it's worse 
the the treatment and to apply this treatment every 40 days and if it's if it's this a uh, uh, um, a balance between what you win and the economical uh, um, revenues uh, related with the effort that you probably need people to apply that and more uh, uh, mm. things to do the treatment. Yes, that's why we uh, also include with one treatment was the, the T1 where we applied the bacteria once, okay? So that treatment also let us to compare the influence of just applying the bacteria once. And of course, the results were not so good as when we apply it periodically. Okay, so it was more and more clear uh, in terms of production. There was an increase, I remember, of 7%, no? And just applying the bacteria once. But when we apply the bacteria uh, every 40 days and we diminish the synthetic fertilizers, it changed from a 7% to a 33%. So it really worth to apply then every 40 days or well, it, it depends a little bit of the crops and also you can ask for advice to the to the company which produced this time no stock was the company who provide the these commercial products so you can ask them what is the, the best way of uh, the dose and the, the time you can apply them in, the, in a specific case Thank you very much, Raul. Uh, let's go, go with the next one. Uh, how is your feeling about the Bicrop technology? How was the, the, the let's say, the, the profit that you take from working with biomakers? How do you feel when you, when you see that result from the microbial functional analysis in the soil? Yes, I was uh, really happy because, as I showed you at the end, the, well, we obtain more microbiological results, of course, the, the, the relative abundances of all the, the microorganisms uh, that uh, were found in, in the soil, not only those microorganisms that we applied, but all the present in, in the soil. But it was quite also interesting to see the relationship between the increase or decrease of a specific taxa. And in this case, that helped us to explain why we obtain uh, bigger sizes in, in tomatoes, in tomatoes, because we didn't have the technology, and this guy, in this case, Big Crop provided uh, this kind of analysis to show how a specific fit hormones uh, uh, increase in, in in the crop. Okay, thank you very much, Raúl. Okay, let's let's say some question from the audience. Uh, uh, let's see the first question that we have here from Edisa Garcia. Maybe Juan Carlos, <coughs> can you help us with this question? How do you measure the microbial functions? Okay, so in the microbial function, we uh, we make a prediction, a functional prediction report. In this sense, we estimate the the prevalence microbial groups that they are related with some biological function. In this sense, depending on the number of copy genes that we detected and also the, the microbial groups that, they are, that we know that they are involved in this process, we establish a prediction about the, the level of biological function that this microbiome, microbiome it could be uh, able to, to perform. It. So we are not, we are not measuring uh, at a transcriptional level, uh, at a uh, at a transcriptional uh, analyze, uh, we we exactly uh, we we measure the, the DNA and we detected copy of genes that we know that have an enzymatic uh, performance, and also taxonomic taxonomical genes that inform us about the the presence and the, uh, the abundance of microorganisms for specific taxa. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Another question from the audience. Uh, uh, Ayavere from Uganda, he asked uh, if we can say uh, some of the countries uh, that uh, we used to work with them. Uh, we, we can say that we work with uh, mostly uh, uh, all the countries in, in uh, America, Latin America, so Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, Colombia, um, Panama, uh, United States, of course, 
Uh, we have samples also from all the European country. Asia is also involved in this. Now I remember Filipinas, and there are Morocco samples. There are these are some of the uh, countries that we are working uh, now. Um, next question. Let's answer this. Uh, there is a question from Chu Yang. Does the 40 million microbial taxonomical information obtained globally? What we do in a biomaker is to have a, a reference from the scientific uh, microbial database. So we have our own database uh, with all the sequences uh, that we obtain from samples. And uh, we have uh, obtained all the DNA changes from the scientific literature. So uh, yes, it's globally. We, we obtain that data from all the samples that we receive around the world. Um, and how similar is a good soil in one country or a location different from another? This is a, a very uh, tough question. I, I would say like um, microbial and maybe Raul, you can uh, help me with that also because you are a professor and <laughs> head of microbiology in, uh, in Almería. Uh, Yes, my, um, the soil microbiome is very specific from different locations, soil types, climatological conditions. So uh, uh, good soil health, uh, we, we understand good soil health, uh, a soil that is uh, rich in uh, biodiversity and that uh, we have this soil, uh, let's say, um, with a life, no? So this could be different from, of course, a sandy soil from a clay soil. So uh, it will be different, uh, the good soil, uh, let's say, status from a country or for a location from another one. But uh, of course, the life in, in it, uh, fungi and bacteria are quite important to qualify that soil have a good or a healthy soil. Raul, can you add something to that, please? Yes, that, that's the key, the biodiversity in soil. We are performing another study in also in the greenhouses of Almeria because uh, we seen uh, a conventional, okay, a conventional greenhouse uh, where all the uh, let's say the nutrients are provided by fertigation based on synthetic fertilizer. At the time, we also apply the biofertilizers, but there are let's say a 10% of the greenhouses of Almeria which are devoted to organic agriculture. And here, this kind of fertigation is not allowed with. So they have to apply, for example, organic amendments, uh, fresh organic amendments, or this kind of biofertilizers we, we applied on this research. And we are comparing the, because the, we can say the soil is the same. It's just one uh, greenhouse here, conventional, another greenhouse here, uh, it's organic. So the, the inputs are different, no? And we can see clear there are in the literature several uh, diversity alpha and beta diversity indices. And of course, we see clearly the differences between conventional and organic uh, agriculture soils. Okay? The increase in the biodiversity is quite clear. Thank you, Raul. We have another question for you from the audience, Raul. They want to know the doses applied and the yeah, tomato tree. I replied it before. So with one bottle, uh, it can be applied for one hectare. This uh, greenhouse was around 1.3 hectares, but as we was not applied for the full greenhouse, we had enough uh, using one bottle each time. So one bottle every 40 days of each, uh, of each bacteria. That's the dose we uh, use. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have almost done. Uh, uh, I just want to let you know that this uh, presentation will be available by Rescue. If I'm not wrong, uh, you can ask, uh, access to this presentation in our webpage. And please, uh, um, uh, also, if you have more questions, you can write that in the chat and we will answer uh, to you uh, by mail in the case that we are not able to answer now. We have a couple of minutes to, to finish this webinar, so I just want to thank again to Raul uh, to collaborate with us in this interesting project. 
Uh, thank you to attend and uh, to be uh, to follow this webinar with attention and with uh, for all your questions. Thank you, Juan Carlos. And um, I don't know if you want to add something, Juan Carlos, to finish this webinar. Yeah, to highlight the the grateful for all the people that's attending to the webinar and of course to uh, Raúl for your interesting results and to share us with uh, your, your, your nice project, your nice work. Thank you. Thank you. I want also to, to, to thank to Ifigenia, Juan, and Biomakers, of course, and to the audience for, for attending this, this webinar. Okay. Thank you very much to everyone. Please uh, follow us in, uh, uh, in uh, social media and this webinar will be available by, by Rescue and my team confirmed that. So please go to our webpage and you can rescue by, to see that uh, this talk and uh, see you in the next webinar. Bye bye to everyone. Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.